weeks. But praise God, did you enjoy our family day last week? Yes. Later on, we're gonna show you some small videos, small clips on how other team lost. I know. Okay. <laughs> on how we have fun. Okay. Everyone won last week. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you believe that everyone won last week? We won. A, we won. Fun, laughter, friendship, relationship builds there. We all want, right? The Holy Spirit, I believe, is you know, is a, uh, is rejoicing with us as well at this time. And uh, I know for sure that today, also as we, you know, as we are entering to another month next, you know, August next month. Are you excited you to go to your school? Not yet. Are you still in the vacation mode? How about uh, those who are on vacation? Are you ready to go to your work? Yes. Not yet? Yeah. Okay. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. But uh, praise God because uh, we have a good summer. Yeah. Yesterday and today, I think the whole, almost one week, it's a, it's a good sunny day, right? So I see a lot of uh, updates on Facebook about how they, how they spend their time or how they spend this, uh, this sunny day with them. It's amazing. So right now, I'm so excited to share to you something, you know, what is in my heart for the past few days. It's about something that we need in our daily lives. Do you know that we are always on the bottom? Do you believe that? You know, even though we have a good life, we have, we have, God has given us job, God has given us career, businesses, uh, relationship, parents, we have, they have, God given us children, I believe the enemy will still continue to attack and destroy us. Okay? And right now I'm going to share with you about how we are going to overcome. You no, know, with these attacks. We need to overcome. Every day we need to overcome. That's why the title of my sermon today is We Are Overcomers. The Overcomers. Who are the overcomers? Amen? Are we all overcomers? Amen? Brothers, do you overcome since you already, you know, you sleep late during the night now? Do you overcome? A little bit, right? We overcome. But congratulations, Brother Stola, for having a new baby. Amen. Praise God. Congratulations, Brother Sister Gladys. Yes. You overcome. With diapers, nappies, <laughs> everything sleep, sleepless night, you overcome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, we need to overcome every day. It is because we are in the battle. Spiritually, physically, mentally, we are always in the battle. Now, victory is the finished product. When God said we are victorious, it's true. We are victorious. Do you believe that? When Jesus Christ went to the cross, died there, he already gained the victory for us. Hallelujah. Amen. So right now, we are victorious. But we are still facing a lot of challenges in our life. And we believe if we keep having faith in Christ, we will continuously have this victory in our life. But how can we achieve the victory that we need to become overcomers? Say the person beside you, you are overcome. Okay? You know, to become overcomers, we need to look at Jesus Christ differently. Okay? You need to look at Jesus Christ differently. You need to remove the previous belief that you know about Jesus Christ, but you must see Jesus Christ according to the Bible, according to what the Bible is telling us, who Jesus Christ is. Jesus Christ is our model, okay? He's not a genie. Sometimes we make Jesus Christ a genie. We make three wishes and it makes come true. No. He is not a genie. He is our Lord and our King. Okay? You must see Jesus Christ differently now. He is not dead. Actually, He rose and alive again. He is not a myth created by man. He created man and the universe. That's a different thing, okay? Many people said that Jesus Christ is a myth. They think that man made Jesus Christ. No, 
Actually, Jesus Christ created men and the universe. He doesn't ignore each one of us. In fact, He loves us so much, always knocking at the door of our hearts. He never ignores us. He did not lose the fight. He overcame the world. Right? The Bible said, He overcame the world. Amen, Hallelujah, church. That's why in John 16, 33, it says here, I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. Okay, in this world we may have tribulation. But take heart, I have overcome the world. This is what Jesus Christ said. Take heart, I have overcome the world. It means that it is for us as well. When we are in Christ, since He overcame the world, we can overcome the world as well. I mean, church, even how difficult your situation is. Church, you have the key to overcome the world. Imagine if you have an umbrella. Being a Christian, imagine you have an umbrella. When it rains, what are you going to do? Are you going to use your bag to cover you? What? You open the umbrella and use it to cover you. Get me? But sometimes we as Christians, we already have this victory, we already have this umbrella, but when it rains, we never cover ourselves. We just use our umbrella as a display. We just use this as a, you know, you know, maybe carry ourselves. This is sometimes who we are. We must know who we are. We must know what we have in Christ so that we can use it to overcome the world. I mean, church, that's why it's very important to know who you are and who Jesus Christ is in your life. Because each one of us have everything already. Jesus Christ, he said to us, now we are co-heirs with Christ. So whatever Christ has, we can have also. When Jesus Christ overcame, it means that we can overcome the world also. You know what we have right now? What Jesus Christ has before? It is the Holy Spirit. It's the same Holy Spirit that we have right now. When the Holy Spirit rose Jesus Christ from the dead, then the Holy Spirit can also rose us from any difficulties in our life. And at the same time, He can resurrect us to heaven as well. That's the same that has Jesus Christ before. It's a person, it's the Holy Spirit is God as well. That's why it's very important to know what you have and to know who you are in Christ. I mean, church, that's why, you know, we, we just have to understand that we, when we become overcome, we must act on it. We, we must open everything that what we have already in Christ. Just like the illustration I give you, you have a marvela, if you don't open it, then you cannot be overcomer. That's why the Bible said, faith without action is dead. That's why right now we are going to study the life of Paul because you know Paul is very you know important person in the in, you know in the Bible. He wrote a lot of epistles or letters in the church. And we're gonna see his struggle, what happened to him, and we're gonna, you know, we're gonna study on how he overcome the world as well. Do you, do, do you want to listen about the story of Paul? Can we all set up and read Acts 16, 25 to 35? This is the story of Paul when, when he was in prison. Okay? Can you read it with me? About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prisons were shaken. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bonds were fastened. When the jailer woke and saw that the prison doors were open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, supposing that the prison had escaped. But Paul cried with a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. And the jailer called for lights and rushed in. And trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And he said, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved, you and your household. And they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in the house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their woods. 
and he was baptized at once, he and all his family. Then he brought them up into his house and set food before them. And he rejoiced alone with his entire household that he had believed in God. But when it was day, the magistrates sent the police saying, Let those men go. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you know the situation that we have right now. Maybe we are in the difficult times. Maybe right now we come here in this place with a heavy heart. Lord, I ask you, lift up our us up. Let Lord God, the word of God, encourage us once again that we are overcome. Holy Spirit, bring us your word. Anything that I prepared right now, overcome it. Override it, Father God. And help us to understand how to overcome. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may now visit the church. Okay. So, Paul was in prison. Okay, not because he did something wrong. Okay. It is because he shared the gospel to people. What he did was, he's traveling around. You know, you rule Asia, Asia Minor. He's traveling and he went to Philippi to share the gospel. And what happened was this. While they were sharing healing people there, there was a young girl who has this spirit of divination to tell fortune telling. You probably know about fortune tell telling, right? They, 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 they will tell you about your fortune in the future, you know, about your future, about what you're going to do, everything, you know? I don't know if you have in uh, other countries, but in Philippines, we have a lot of uh, fortune tellers there. And the Bible said it's a spirit of divination. Okay? It is real that people can, you know, can tell fortunes, but it's not from the Lord. Okay? It is a spirit of divination. It's from the devil. So, they, they meet this girl, and this girl is always shouting on streets. Always shouting at Paul and Silas saying, and shouting at them, Hey! These men are the servants of the Most High. Every day, every day shouting, this young girl shouting, these men are servants of the Most High God. Every day. And you know, Paul and Silas get annoyed because every day while, you know, everywhere they go, she followed, and of course they get annoyed, and what happened was this. He, Paul rebuked the spirit in the life of this girl. And this girl, you know, have no power anymore to tell fortunes. So the spirit of divination left her. And to, say, uh, to give you information about the girl, this girl is a slave. Someone owns her. Actually, it's not only one person, but many people owns her. Because in, in, in her, in her, you know, in her spirit of divination, giving fortune to other people, he earned, they learned a lot of money to this, to this girl, to this young girl. And because they have no opportunity to earn money from this girl anymore, so this owner got angry to Paul and Silas. So they called Paul and Silas, you know, they dragged them to many people telling that these men are giving troubles to our community. They brought also to magistrates. To magistrates means those who are ruling you know, to that community. Maybe it's uh, some, uh, maybe a mayor or something in this, in this community, but they brought them to this. While they're, they're, while they're bringing Paul and Silas, they're beating them, actually. And at the same time, ma these magistrates agree to what the people standing against Paul and Silas. So, magis these magistrates also commanded them, hey, okay, you can beat them with, with rods. Imagine by what people are beating them. Not only, you know, while they are dragging, they are beating them. At the same time, magistrates commanded them to beat them with rods. Imagine if you have rights, only one beat is very painful. Okay, this is what is going on into their life. And we are going to study about their life and how they overcame this kind of situation in their life. I don't know, maybe you have this kind of situation also. But we're going to learn about what happened into their life. And 
to tell you honestly, it's very simple, okay? Even though I will not give you points, the real key for us to become overcomers is to have faith in Christ. That's the only key. But of course, I want you to understand how we can extract this faith that we have in Christ. I mean, church, because this is what we have. We all have the measure of faith. It actually mentioned in 1st John 5, 4, it says here, for everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. We are already born of God. Amen, church? We are born again in spirit. It means we can overcome the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. What is it? It's faith. And actually the solution is faith. But why I'm sharing two more points to you? Because I want to extract faith into our life. So that, you know, so that we can become overcomers in Christ. I mean, church, who is it that overcome the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? You probably, yes, pastor, I know all about this. But why I still live in a life of defeat? You have the Bible. Yes, we may have the Bible. But are we applying it? Are we, are, are, are we, are we really love the word of God, or are we rejecting it, or it is only a display in our in our house, or is it only you know something that we can hear because it really feels good to really listen to the word of God. But you know what? In Hosea four six, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. The Bible said, my people destroyed for lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. This is the knowledge that God has given to us. If we want to become overcomers, then we must understand the Word of God because this is, we become victorious in our life. I mean, church, that's why the, the Bible said, since you have forgotten the law of God, I also will forget your children. Church, if you don't love yourself, at least you love your children. If you love your children, then you read the Bible. Study the Bible. Sometimes you just think, you think about yourself, I don't care. Even though I don't read the Bible, it's okay, okay. But how about your children? People are destroyed for love of knowledge. Because our victory comes from the Lord. It, not, it doesn't come from ourselves. You now, many, many Christians, they have capacity to become overcomers, but they fail because of love of knowledge. That's why I want you to extract some juice. I, I brought some lemon right now. Wow, this is something that uh, there's some there's juice inside. But how can you extract juice inside? You open it and squeeze it. You squeeze it, and you you will get some juice inside. You know, every struggle we have, we need faith. Every time there's some problem, difficulties in our life, actually, God is squeezing us so that faith will come. I mean, church. Our Christian life is just like this. But how can we extract it? Now I'm giving you two points so that you can extract the juice of faith in your life. Are you ready to extract juices of faith in your life? Are we church? Okay, this is the point number one. To extract a faith of juice in your life, this is what you're going to do. Clothe yourself with praise and pray. Can you say the person beside you? Clothe yourself with praise and prayer. Okay. This is what happened in Acts 25, okay? Acts 16, 25, 35. At midnight, okay? At midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And what happened? The prison were listening also to them. So, not also them are singing, also the other prisoners were listening to them. No? They, it's very loud. They are not only singing, they are shouting hallelujah, praise God, because every prisoner is inside and we're listening. I'm the church. And what happened? There was a great earthquake so that the foundation of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were open. Because they were singing and praising God and praying, right? Okay, this is what happened. Imagine at midnight. They were preaching, people are beating them. Do you know there's a lot of you know, beaten by rats. It's so tiny. You work only seven and a half hours and then 
you went home, you're sleeping already. Right? Because you're tired. Imagine, at midnight they have time to pray. At midnight they have time to praise God. At midnight they have time to worship God. I mean, imagine if you are so tired, you, you feel a lot of pain in your body, probably I can do is just to sit down and sleep. But you know what? At those times, they extract use of faith in their life. They extract it. Hard work. Praising God. Bringing out this faith that they have. Opening umbrella so that they can be protected and overcome. To, so that they can overcome. And at the same time, okay, they are not only in the normal prison. Okay? I would tell you, because it says here, it says here in 22, 24, the crowd joined in attacking them, okay? This is what happened. The crowd joined in attacking them and the magistrates tore the garments, even the, 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 the magistrates tore the garments of Paul and Silas and gave orders to beat them with rods. <laughs> with rods. And when they had inflicted many blows upon them, many blows, okay? They threw them into prison, ordering the jail to keep them safely. Having received this order, he put them into the inner person, fastened them with stocks. Do you know the meaning of inner prison? They were in the deepest, the furthest, and the darkest prison. The furthest, the deepest, the darkest prison. It's not in the, you know, it's not in the circle, it's not in the ground floor. They are in the lowest level. Imagine it's so hot. It's so dark. They don't have electricity before. They only have this, you know, candle or something to, to have it. They, uh, they, do, they don't deserve to be in that prison. They don't do anything. They only rebuke a young girl who annoyed them so much because it doesn't come from the Lord. But they don't deserve it. They went to the inner prison. It's so dark. It's so, it's so deep. And it's so far. But you know why? They become overcome, even though they have this kind of situation in their life. They can praise God. They can sing songs to God. You know, I assume and I believe they were very, very tired at that, at that time. But they have this strength. You know why? Because the Holy Spirit is always with them, giving them strength to praise God. Always dwelling to the Holy Spirit, filled with the Holy Spirit. And this is the mentality of Paul. Because every situation of Paul, even its hard situation, he has reason to worship. He has reason to worship, even for us, even how difficult our life is. Always and always, there is always reason to worship. Am I church? This is the principle of Paul in 2 Corinthians 4, 7, 10. I want you to, I want you to see this church. This is Paul speaking. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the overpassing, overpassing power belongs to God and not to us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not delivered to despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. You see, Paul is mentioning about the hardship, but telling about something good also. The negative one, and then later on mentioning the positive one. That's how he praised God. Even though he was in the deepest, the darkest, the farthest prison, there is reason for him to tell, praise you, Lord God. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. That's why, church, there are always reasons to praise God in your difficulties. Can you say the person beside you? There is always reason to praise God in your difficulties. Because we always say, I have faith in Christ. I have faith in God. But do we extract this faith to come out juices? You know, this is very important. Praising God, this is the will of God. Do we have time to worship God? If we cannot worship God, 
in happy times, in the joyful times. I tell you, it's harder when we have difficult times. If you want to sing for the Lord in difficult times, start now, even if you don't have problems right now. Who are here have no problems? Okay, praise God, sister, you don't have problems. <laughs> But praise God because we're going to worship God. I'm in church. We can overcome with gladness. Do you know that overcomers are joyful? Do you know that you know overcomers are singing, you know, just like wild song for the Lord? Yes, Lord, for you alone is God. You can you can you know you can joyfully sing for the Lord. This is how we can show faith. That you know, in spite of difficulties that we have right now, get a solution for us. I'm in church. That's why we can praise God. Even if I'm stuck right now, God can bring me out from this situation in our life. I'm in church. This is something that we have in Christ. God brought Jesus Christ, His Son. It seems like He's stuck on the cross. But praise God, the Holy Spirit is with Him. He overcome the world. And we also, at the same time, Christians, we are not stuck. Because we have Jesus Christ. And this is the reason we can pray and we can praise God with all our heart, with all our mind, and with all our strength. Amen, church? That's why in church, if you have cell phone, if you have guitar, play a song. Doesn't mean that you, you need to have good voice to sing for the Lord. Right? Even the keys, C, you can sing with D if you like. If you, if you don't know how to tune with the guitar, right? You can sing for the Lord because God look at your heart. Are we church? It's very important. This, this is something that God is bringing out something in our life. The faith must be in action. And when we sing for the Lord, we are acting in faith. Are we church? It's, you know, this is something that God is telling us in Isaiah 61 3. Okay? That's why I said, clothe yourself. It says here, to give the beauty for ashes, the oil of joy of mourning, the garments of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I think there's a song that in, in the spirit of heaviness, clothe yourself with praise. Clothe yourself with praise. If you have a heavy heart right now, this is actually spirit. It's a spirit from the evil. It says here, a spirit of heaviness. If you want to remove this spirit of heaviness, what you're gonna say? Praise God. You must praise God. And this spirit of heaviness will lead you. And this is the promise of God. Okay? It's spirit. It's not an emotion or feeling, this heaviness. It's spirit. That's why it's very important to praise God together. Every time you come to the church, come early. You know why? Because we're gonna praise God. We're gonna lift the name on high so that the heaviness that we have before we come. They gonna leave us. It's very important, church. The heaviness, it's a spirit. You must understand this one. And even first Thessalonians says, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is what? The will of God in Christ Jesus for you. What is the will of God? Praise God. Praise God. So then go back, let's go back to the story of Paul. So what happened when they sing and praise God? There was earthquake and all the doors were opened. <laughs> and they got an opportunity to share the gospel. To whom? To the jailer. They had the opportunity to share the gospel to the jailer. You know what happened when the jailer, you know, failed to watch over the prisoners? When, they, when a jailer failed to watch them and some of them escaped, it cost them their life. They would be killed as well when you are a jailer. That's why he begged. He begged. The jailer begged and fell upon his knees before Paul because he knew what would happen to him if they would escape. Because it's not only one prison is open, but everyone else, all doors were opened. Okay? There's no escape for him. There's no hope for him. If only one will say, there's no hope for him. But you know what happened? Paul said, we're still here. 
we're still here. And then the opportunity came. The jailer asked, what must I do to be saved? And this is a very good sentence from those people probably whom we love. If he asked us, hey Steve, hey brother, what must I do to be saved? And this is the opportunity to share the gospel to them. Do you want to get opportunity? Praise God. Worship God. Pray. Give hope to people. I'm in church. And you know what happened? Even the jailer clean Paul and Silas. They give him food. And all the family of the jailer got saved because of what happened. So are you ready to praise God and worship God? Do you see the miracles that will give us when we praise and worship God? It's a big miracle. You know, I remember when I have a heart attack. I have a heart attack 2017. I really don't know because I don't feel any sadness or loneliness when I was in Holy Coker or, <laughs> or in the hospital. But I just, I just have this peace. Okay? But uh, probably you know that my wife has no peace for, because maybe because she saw that his that her husband is a uh, is, uh, is on pain at the same time having this heart attack. But I really have this peace, and then flying to the airplane, you know, I'm having a good chat with this uh, <laughs> someone in the helicopter. And when I having a surgery, they do something surgery here. You know what I what, what I did while they having surgery? I actually singing to the Lord. I'm actually singing to the Lord. I, I, I remember singing, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. And I give my voice to all the Lord. Worship you. Oh, my soul, major. So I, I sang the song, okay? And at the same time, I pray in spirit. It's so loud that, that the doctor actually heard it. And they told me, okay, maybe it's a little bit quiet because we're doing something else here. <laughs> little bit quiet, okay? So I, I, I keep quiet, but I still sing. I still sing and pray in spirit. And amazing, you know the peace that I have. You know the victory that I have, I overcome this certainly. Because I believe that no matter what happened to me, God is in, my life is in God's hand. That's why I really praise God. The surgery is so successful that I, until now I can still do whatever I want. This is something that, you know, it really amazes me what the power of prayer, what the power, what, what the power of praising God and worshiping God in our life. Many situations I have just seen it to the Lord. When I have a heavy heart for a brother or for a sister, I just lay my, my, my knee before God, cry. Of course, you know, what happened is so painful sometimes you know, in my life. I just cry and later on, I just stand up, praise God, sing to the Lord. And then later that week, He solved my problem. Many times, He solved my problems. Every time I praise God, I worship God, He solved my problem. Because I believe that there is power when we praise God, when we sing song Amen. today. Amen. Amen. Church? Amen. Do you believe that? Amen. Do you want to instruct faith in your life? Amen. Praise God, pray, and worship God. Amen, church? So point number two. This is something that we must do so that we can extract a faith juice in our life. Is to this, to care to help others. Care to help others. Say the person beside you, hey, care to help others. <laughs> care to help others. Care to help others. Okay? This is, the, this is something very, very important because this is something that connects to our character. Okay? Even though you are very prayerful, you worship God in your heart, but your character is different, then there's some lacking in your life. There's still lacking in your life. When I say care to other people, it means you love them. This is very powerful, but yet many Christians ignore to do it. Many Christians ignore to do it because they don't know what is the power of helping other people. Because the Bible said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. If you know the power of helping other people, you will continue to help other people. I believe, I believe in this church. If you know the principle why we help others and how and what we can get by helping them, you will see you're going to help many people in church. That's why, listen carefully 
of this principle. In Acts 16, 29, 34, this is what the jailer happened, okay? And the jailer caught the lights and rushed in, and trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in this house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their woods. And he was baptized at once, he and all his family. Then he brought them up into his house and set foot before them. And he rejoiced along with his entire household that he had believed in God. So this is what happened to the jailer. Because of the care of Paul to the jailer. You know, I, 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 for me, okay, if they don't have this heart to help this jailer, they probably stay in jail or probably, you know, their, their stay in jail will be delayed. They will continue be, to be in jail if they don't have this heart to help the jailer. Okay? But because Paul, you know, he's not only a worshiper of God, but he is also concerned to the welfare of other people. He's very concerned to the welfare of other people. He knows what will happen to the jailer. He knows that when they go out, all of the prisoners, this jailer will be killed. They will be, you know, persecuted by death. So, imagine all the doors, and they have the capacity to go out. Even those prisoners who are prisoners at that time, they, they, they remain in the cell. Because I believe that there is an intervention of God there. So, but I want to tell you in Romans 12, 21, it says here, do not overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Study this verse, okay? Do not overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the secret, okay? If you want to overcome in your life, what is the Bible saying us? Overcome with good. Our life has been attacked by evil. Many attacks we, we, we get or we get from the devil and we should overcome it with good. You see the key? If you overcome it with good, it means that we become overcomers. If we do good to other people, we are actually advancing the kingdom of God at the same time, we are our life will become will become better. Because we are overcoming it with good. The evil is pushing in our lives, but we must push this evil by doing good. Because even the Bible said, do not be, you know, do not be tired of doing good, especially those who are in the family of Christ. Because doing good, when we overcome evil by good, we are actually overcoming. That's why Jesus Christ, He never hates, He always loves. He never do bad things, He always do good. That's why the kingdom of God has been advanced because of His life. So if you want to become overcomers, overcomers, do good. Can you say the person beside you? Do good. You know, church, if you just open our eyes, many are killing themselves outside because they thought they were hopeless. Because there's no, there, nothing is left in their life to be joyful anymore. Many families have been broken and need fixing. Many youth are addicted to drugs. They're addicted to sex. And you know why you are here? We are here in this community to do good. We are here in this community to share Jesus Christ to them. Even they are not asking you, what must I do to be saved? You can share to them Jesus Christ in their life. If we all together do this, sharing the gospel to this community, crimes will listen. You know, suicide will listen. Everything that is bad will listen. Because when we overcome the evil by overcoming it with good, it all, all the evil things that the devil is trying to do in this community will be listened. Okay, church? This is the word of the devil. And if you believe in God, and if you believe that He will supply all your needs, 
And if you believe that nothing can harm you, then why afraid helping other people? If you know, okay, if you know that in, you are in good hands, you are af you are not afraid to help others. You are not afraid because you know when when the fruit, you know, when the juice of this faith that we have, it comes from our situation is very good, church. But I believe God is teaching us to be faithful to God by using other people's lives as well. If I see that my brother Sola has problem, I will use my faith and help him to praise and worship with God with him. So that the faith of truth in his life will come out and at the same time the use of my faith will come out as well. So it's not only from my faith comes out the Jews faith, but it's from him as well when I help him. But if you don't involve yourself to other people, God will teach you faith in your life. What do you like? Which one do you like? God will teach you in your circumstances or God will teach you faith from the circumstances of others? They do good things to other people. You get what I meant? You get what I meant? Sometimes the devil is trying to attack us so much, so many times because we ignore helping other people. Because we ignore helping other people. Because, you know, the faith that God has given us is not only for us to get the benefit, but this faith that we receive from the Lord, it helps other people as well. If you pray for the people, they're going to receive the you know, that benefit as well, that God will give it to them. I mean, church, we are called to be intercessors, not only for our life, but also for other people. Involve yourself. I know it sounds scary, but you must involve your life to other people. It's hard to involve life, right? Sometimes you have this good, you know, intention to, to help them, but sometimes they respond differently. They, they, they respond in, in an attack mode. I know it hurts sometimes, but it helps us to extract juices of faith as well. When we, you know, when we, when we experience this kind of sufferings. But this, I hope and I pray, this will never stop us in helping other people, in praying other people. I remember, you know, testimony. Of uh, sister, you know, sister Anita. Do you know sister Anita? She's in uh, Hope Madrid now. She is, uh, she is uh, serving God there as a, you know, worshiper. She has, she has worked. I think he, she worked in uh, Qatar for many years, and uh, she's working with a host family. And this host family has a little young baby girl. Okay, not baby girl, but a young girl. Okay, and this girl has this condition. She's very weak. She cannot stand. She she's uh, she's very thin. She's also cannot. Uh, she's she's very very weak. That she cannot manage to stand by herself. So what she did was to pray for this girl every day. Every day she prayed for this girl for healing because she believed that by Jesus Christ everyone can be healed. Okay. She believes that by prayer this baby girl can heal. Through many months, many many days, many months praying for this child, she got changed. And later, this baby becomes stronger and can stand up by herself. She can stand up by herself by praying every day for this child. For her, it's only stranger because she's only working for the family to you know to clean the house. But not to, you know, not to pray. But you know, she has this desire to pray because she believes in Jesus Christ. And you see what happened? The glory come upon her. The glory of God come upon the life of the family. When the teacher, you know, when the school knew about this, and when the family knew about this, that she can stand already. Even the grandparents asked her to pray for her, for him. Even the school received. You know, got this message that wow, it's a miracle that prayer works. You know, sometimes only prayer that 
other brothers need, and we must spend time to pray for them. Everything on our life, we can pray for our brothers and sisters. Visit them. Visit them, give them encouragement, you know, just send messages to them, and it will help them to come back to the Lord. If you see that they are, in a way, falling away from their faith, just go to them, visit them. That's why we are here for one another to do good things. The Bible said in Ephesians 2, we are created for workmanship in Christ so that we can do good works. So that we can do good works. Because these good works, we become overcomers in Christ. I'm in church. So maybe you're going to say, Pastor, my problem is harder. My problem has no solution. Hey, Jesus Christ died on the cross for every kind of problems that you have. There's no harm for Jesus Christ. There's no big problem for Jesus Christ. The only problem is how you see Jesus Christ in your life. If you see your problems bigger than Jesus Christ, that is, that is, there is no solution for that. I guarantee you there is no solution for that. If you see your problems bigger than Jesus Christ, I guarantee you there is no solution for that. But if you see Jesus Christ bigger than your problem, even how hard it is, God can solve it. Church, you, okay, even mathematics so hard, God can help you. No mathematics is hard if Jesus Christ is bigger than your mathematics. Are we church? And even our problems. If you know that God can solve our problems, then God is always available. You don't need to dial 112. You only bow on your knees and pray. I'm in church. I'm in church. So that's my church. Do good works because you are free. Do good works because you are saved. Do good works because you love Jesus Christ. And do good works because this is who you are. I'm in church. And in church, can I invite the music team? And just, you know, let's just have this moment of uh, moment of silence so that let the Holy Spirit speak to us right now. Faith is very important, but extracting this faith juice in our life, we must understand. Money is very important, but if we don't know how to use our money, it's still useless. We all have measures of faith. If we don't know how to use this faith, how to activate this faith, it's still useless. Right now, I don't know what is going on into your life, but I want to, I want to pray for all of you, for every situation in your life. Just like Paul, he was in prison, so deep, so far and so dark. Maybe right now you think that your relationship in Christ is so far. I don't know. Maybe you think that, Lord, why, why are you so far from me? Or maybe right now you are in the darkest moment. You try to be good, but there's a lot of situations that push you to sin. I don't know what it is. It's, it's your private life. But probably you are in the darkest moment right now. I don't know. Maybe it's not only sin, but maybe because you have done something wrong in any decision in your life that brought you into darkness. You think that you're stuck already in the kind of situation that you have. And right now, maybe some of you are you are in a situation that is so you are in very very deep that you're gonna you gonna come out from that kind of pit, you know, because it's so deep. You want to set free, but it's hard to climb up because it's so deep. Maybe you fall into something that uh, you just you just don't like, and you want to come up, but it's hard. You know, just like Paul, they don't deserve this kind of prison in their life. Just like Paul and Silas, they just praise and worship. Because they know 
that they don't deserve this. They are in prison, in inner prison, but they fight because they have faith. They have Jesus Christ. I know right now you are in the deepest moment, darkest moments. But I want you just to praise God, to worship God right now. Ask Him to lift you up from this very deep you know, situation that you have to bring you out from the darkest moment because He loves you so much. Can we all stand up, church, and let us sing this song? And later on, we're going to fight with praise, worship for the Lord so that the juice of faith that we have right now will come out. Can we, can we sing this song together, church? Father God, let love 
for us more in our lives. That we, Lord God, that we could worship you with love as well. That we could will help other people with love. Thank you so much, Lord God, because no matter what we do, Lord God, you know what is our future. Give us this guidance, Mother God. Sometimes we plan our future. But Lord, sometimes we fail. But right now, we want your guidance. As Paul, Lord God, extract juices of faith. They saw light of your glory shone upon their lives right now. We want to see your glory, Father God. Let the light come into our life. Let Jesus Christ shine more into our life so that there, this darkness will go. This deep, you know, this hardship in our life will soften, Father God. Everything, Lord God, that we know for sure from you, Lord God, I want you to remind us all the time. Holy Spirit, guide us. Always help us in every relationship that we have. Give light to our relationship. Give light to our career. Give life to our health, Father God. Because you are the one, who, Lord God, who bring us from darkness. Who bring us, oh Lord God, from the deepest problems that we have. And you are the one who always draw closer to us. And we will no longer feel that we are so far away from you, Lord God. Thank you so much, Lord God, that you freed us from this slavery, Lord God. We know for sure that we are overcomers. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen.